Hey everybody, what up? All right, so in this video, I'm gonna explain the process that I had to go through to develop on the MetaQuest 3 standalone while using Unreal Engine and the fact that those two right there equal pain. But even more so than that, uh, Quest 3 standalone development is just not a fun experience. So I'm gonna go into some of the things that I had to do. So first things first, a lot of people are not using Unreal Engine for VR development, it would seem. Now, Batman's like Arkham Asylum or whatever, one of the latest Batman games that came out um, was written on this engine. Anyway, there, there's some AAA games. I'm not even a huge gamer, to be honest. But the fact of the matter is, is like a lot of people, indie developers, are probably going to make a virtual reality game with Unity Engine because it's a lot easier. There's a lot more tools and support. With VR development and Unreal Engine, you're kind of on your own. You're using Blueprints and C++ and, and good luck. Um, so all that said, one of the first things you have to do if you're going to develop for Quest 3 standalone, you have to understand that it's actually just simply a glorified Android phone. So if we look at the MetaQuest 3 here, it has a Snapdragon XR2 Generation 2 processor, 8 gigabyte of RAM, and 128 gigabyte of storage, or 512 if you're going to pay a couple hundred dollars extra a decent refresh rate, decent uh, screen size. Overall, you know, the specs are Im impressive for a standalone device. But at the end of the day, again, this is just a standalone device. It's not using anything, you know, 8 gigabyte of RAM is not very much. And the Snapdragon processor is not very good. Now, one of the things that totally sucks about developing on the Quest is that this is probably for gamers as well. In fact, I know it is. It has an update, it seems like, twice a day. It's always updating. There's always an update. Um, but Quest um, has its own store, right? So all these games, they don't look that good because they can't run on the, the Quest 3 standalone. So the games that you put on the um, Meta Horizon store it is going to be stuff that only runs standalone. Now, most hardcore VR game developers are not using this for standalone gameplay. I mean, heck, you could probably argue that there's not a lot of game developers using VR at all. Um, so th the bottom line is that there's not enough video games for this, and it's still a very niche form of development. So MetaQuest having a standalone without all the wires and things, it attracts a different level of audience, somebody that can easily put it on and not have to deal with a, a gaming computer and all of that. So that's where it excels. But again, it's very limited what you can do with it uh, as, as far as any sort of uh, hardcore games or anything. Not even hardcore, but just literally PlayStation 2 level games do not work on it. So what people end up doing is they buy this MetaQuest link. And this MetaQuest link is for developers too, but it allows you to hook your Quest 3 to your computer. So in my case, I have a 4080 graphics card and um, you know, ton of ton of uh, power behind my desktop. I guess my 4080 is getting out of date now. It's a couple years old. But that said, I use this MetaQuest link to link my Quest 3 to my computer. Before I bought the Quest 3 and was testing on that, I was using the Rift S, and that also worked just fine because the Rift S required your computer, uh, and therefore it still looked uh, pretty pretty good. So all that said, this MetaQuest link does cost $80. It doesn't matter where you get it, whether you order it online or go to Target or Walmart or something. It'll cost you 80 bucks, and I swear to God, this thing doesn't work. Like, it'll work some of the times, and then, like, whatever happens, it will lose its connection all the time. I'm telling you, the developers will know. Like, it doesn't have to get – it's not like it's getting loose or something. I mean, it sometimes simply doesn't work. So it gets to the point where I have to put up uh, the terminal, and I just start killing every process I can find, whether it's meta – uh, or Unreal Engine. And it could be the combination of the two, but there is definitely a disconnect when it comes to uh, this Quest 3 working with Unreal Engine. So say you're stupid like me and you still want to use a AAA engine to make your VR game and kind of roll your own path. That's what I did. This step is what you need to do in order to get Unreal Engine working with MetaQuest VR. Literally look at all these instructions. And there's a good chance after you do all this, it's not going to work. So this is one of those things where it'll take you like, you know, anywhere from a couple of hours to a couple of days to a couple of weeks, depending on how technical you are. So for anybody that's ever done Android development, it's not exactly fun. I mean, you have 
uh, the, these SDK managers, they, it seems like, again, there's like some new flavor of, of Android coming out every other day. They always have these, you know, obscure names named after a food or a fish or something, something you can never really remember. And they're getting replaced so quickly anyway. It's like uh, there, there's just so many different. Uh, these are SDK platforms and you have the SDK tools and all of these things have to be very, very specific when you're actually trying to get this to work on Unreal Engine and Quest 3 standalone. Uh, that said, there's also this tool that you use to develop with. So this is what I use for the Quest 3. So uh, all that said, let me jump over to Unreal real quick. This shows you once you have all of that stuff working, then you're part of the way there as far as being able to run MetaQuest 3 with Unreal. You'll have to download and install this plugin, and then you add it to uh, your Marketplace plugins for Unreal Engine. And then once you do that, you can go into your, your plugins and then you can um, find uh, Meta. So this is the Meta XR plugin. So once you have that, you can go ahead and add that plugin to your project, and then you can get these tools here. So these tools allow you to actually just, uh, if you click um, Meta XR Simulator and then you play the game, it will run in the simulator. Now here's the fun part. The simulator is more like an emulator and it doesn't actually work the same way as your MetaQuest standalone. So I ran into this the hard way where I would be using this tool and like, oh, okay, things are working correctly and they look good. But the fact of the matter is, is that the simulator, which is the emulator really, it's using your computer's specs. So it's not using what runs on the standalone, like the Snapdragon and the eight gigs of RAM. So it actually looks better. It looks different. And then when you go to actually package your game and build it and then put it on your Quest 3 device, you'll find that it doesn't resemble anything like what you saw in the editor. All right, so then after you go ahead and build your game, it takes forever. You're going to go ahead and in install the APK here. So you go over and you click Add a Build. Now, that's where you're going to become familiar with both APK and OB files. So there's a bunch of hard restrictions when it comes to Android development. You can't have over 4 gigabyte of an OB file. What is even an OB file, an OBB or uh, APK file? Those are both uh, basically, I, I don't even know if they're Java formats, but they're definitely the formats that are used by Android. And then if you're going to put something on like the, the Google App Store uh, or whatever the hell you call it. But the bottom line is that they're basically minified files. So you can think of them as zip files. In fact, if you turn them to a zip file, you can open the contents in Windows. So some of the cool things, though, is that th this tool does actually give you quite a bit of um, visualization into the actual performance that you're getting on the Quest 3 standalone when you're running it. And the downside is, is that the documentation is atrocious. So good luck sort of figuring this out. But it's very quick and easy when you're like seeing that you're, you're maxing out your GPU and your CPU, which is what I commonly ran into, mostly GPU. So when I was, uh, cr before I even got to the point where I was maxing out the GPU, I was getting all these crazy errors where the game would actually literally fire up and I'd see the Unreal Engine splash screen and then just nothing. And I'd go over here and I'd read the logs and the logs would tell me nothing. They were pointing to memory addresses. And for those that are familiar, memory addresses aren't going to tell you nothing. They don't tell you the line number that the code uh, errored out on it doesn't tell you what function or what the problem might be um, some errors do but in the errors that I was dealing with they did not so I ended up making this uh, plug in one night and I did this because I needed to take the freaking memory address errors and turned it into uh, like a symbol location so that I could actually find out where in the code it was having the problem now this was all written in a couple of hours and if you think that I used AI for this, then you would be right because I did. Um, I told AI what I what 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 I needed to write, and it actually did some pretty impressive stuff. But this is a topic for another video. I don't know a goddamn thing about how any of this stuff works. I really don't. I just know that it does work. Um, and topic for another video, actually. But um, the bottom line is that this thing would detect when I'm actually when I have my device plugged in. It would constantly be re reading the logs that I was streaming out. And then here's an example of where it would take a memory address and it would tell me where actually in the code that it, it was actually failing. So in my case, I had some bad resources, but nothing that would indicate, hey, this resource has a problem and it's crashing the whole game. 
it doesn't do it on Unreal Engine. It doesn't do it when you're running the quest on your PC. It only does it in a standalone Quest 3 build. So those are the, the trouble, troubling things that you have to run the build, create the APK, install it on your Quest 3 standalone, put on your Quest, find out that it breaks, eventually go through the logs, find a memory address error that doesn't tell you anything more than that, and that's why I created this tool. So again, some people would probably be like, well, why did you make an Unreal Engine game in VR if, you know, if you're an indie developer or whatever? And you'd probably be right. But to be honest with you, I've been using Unity for a long time. I'm a C-sharp developer, at least I used to be. I did that for many years. I don't like uh, Unity Engine very much. I find it to be burdensome. I don't like the fact that you can't get access to the, the core game, like uh, source code. It's all abstracted away. Uh, I don't like their asset store. And it's also not used by AAA engines where Unreal Engine is. Unreal Engine has way more capabilities, but I understand a lot of indie game developers think that Unity or something like Godot, which is not nearly going to be able to do what I needed to do, uh, would be an option. But anyway, that's why I went with Unreal Engine with the pain and, uh, and all that. But the pain actually goes on. So MetaQuest 3 uses something called Vulkan, and it's a low-level 3D uh, shader I don't even know if it's a shader. It would, I guess it would be shader. But anyway, it's a low-level graphics uh, language. And it's much more powerful than something like OpenGL. Um, but that said, so Vulkan is still relatively new, even though this came out nine years ago. When it comes to supporting Vulkan, it, there's actually not a lot of great support when it comes to something like Quest 3. Also, just a little-known fact, I always wondered, like, why is this Kronos group somehow in charge of all graphics processing right uh they, they're this group is actually telling nvidia how to create their gpus and, and and it's like how do they have that power well it turns out like the chronos group is a very obscure name but it's like all the major companies are, are a part of it whether it's google nvidia uh you can see how uh how huawei i don't know epic games is there amd apples so all the biggest companies are there and help this chronos group and chronos group came out with webgl uh, then now WebGPU, they came up with OpenGL, which was a DirectX uh, or Direct3D competitor that Microsoft had. So the bottom line is there's a lot. You could go, you could write a, a, a Bible probably based on the history of this thing. But that said, the bottom line is that there's a lot of things in Unreal Engine like Nanite or, or, um, or Lumen, and they do not work in Quest 3. You also have tons of materials um and shaders and things that that work in unreal engine that do not work on quest 3 and it's very painful to go through and figure out why your materials are showing up completely weird uh, or don't work at all or completely crash the system so yeah the bottom line at the end of the day the quest 3 is not fun to develop on um if you're targeting standalone you're going to struggle mightily if you're using unreal engine even if you are just uh, using something better or you have much less uh, performance you're looking to get out of your game, you're still going to have a hard time. Uh, it's still a little bit of a messy process. And there's basically no documentation or developer forums that are going to be of any help. 